Hi, I'm Patricia Grabarek. And I'm Katina Sawyer, and welcome to the Worker Being Podcast. Before we get started, we wanted to make sure you know how to find us and what we have going on. So you can find us on our website. You can learn about who we are at workerbeing.com. You can follow us on social at Worker Being to get all the updates about what's going on with Worker Being. And you can also join our brand new members only community at workerbeing.com slash community. So today I'm actually sharing an article um, about, Yay. yeah, I'm excited. It's about hybrid entrepreneurs, which we are. It's about us. <laughs> mm. Research is me search. Um, <laughs> so how are we hybrid entrepreneurs? Like what, what's the concept? So hybrid entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs. I gosh, I'm going to like trip over that word this entire episode. So apologize <laughs> to everyone about that. But basically it's individuals that have a job that they're doing for a wage that they're employees for another organization. And they also have a business that they've started. So it's kind of like, I mean, we talk about side hustles, right? So it's kind of like that. But um, the business that you've started that is like, you know, a true entrepreneurial business where you're trying to build something that eventually you may like want to become your full-time job. Well, I mean, yes, that is us. You're right. We <laughs> are hybrid entrepreneurs. Well, that's cool. Um, I'm excited to learn more about this topic of being a hybrid entrepreneur. Is it around a particular area like hybrid entrepreneur wellness? <laughs> uh, wellness, what a thought. Um, but <laughs> actually it's about, um, persistence. So, which is related to, um, it can be related to wellness, right? Because you're not going to continue persisting in something if you're exhausted and tired and not feeling motivated. Um, so it's really about like, how can people in this type of a a dual role where they're a hybrid entrepreneur, how can they continue to persist in difficult situations and what are the things that impact their persistence? Um, So we'll talk a little bit about like how your job can enrich your um, side business. We'll talk a little bit about um, self-efficacy and like really having confidence in your skill set. And we'll talk a little bit about fit. So we've talked about like job fit before, organizational fit before. So um, all those things we know impact your well-being overall. So well-being is in there, but not directly measured. <laughs> cool. Well, that sounds awesome. I'm very excited about that because I do think that persistence is something that clearly you need to have um, as a hybrid entrepreneur. And think of all the things that the world benefits from, from people that are doing side hustles. And so we want to make sure that people are able to keep going in what they want to do. So I think that that sounds like a very interesting topic and probably something that we should take notes on ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. I was reading it. And I was like, Ooh, good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Cause like, we do yes. know, <laughs> like, I think we did a few, Oh gosh, I don't know. It was a few years ago or when the last episode we did about like side hustles. We do know that they actually help you be a better employee. So yay for the companies that you're hired with, right? You're, you do, you do better if you have something like this, but what about the reverse? And so it's kind of nice to have this article to be like, oh, well, your work can actually help you too um, as a hybrid entrepreneur. So that's kind of fun. It's a fun piece. That's awesome. Well, that's very exciting. I am looking forward to learning more about that and uh, taking some notes for us as well. And for folks out there who also are in a similar boat, hopefully you're ready to take some notes too. But before we hop into that, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Um yeah, it's I'm trying to think of like what happened this weekend. Oh, Danny and I went to a f- restaurant that you would totally appreciate. Oh. Um, yeah, I can't believe I didn't even tell you about this yet. Um, but we went to on Saturday night, we went to a restaurant. Um, it's called Gucci Osteria and it's at Gucci. Um, and it's run oh. by Massimo Batura. Have you heard of him yes. before? Yes, mm-hmm. I have. Yeah, so super fun, fancy chef. And so we like loved his chef's table episode. And then, uh, you know, they talked about him in uh, what's that show? Oh my gosh. There's a TV, whatever. There's a show on Netflix. Yeah, Um, Chef's Table. Yeah, but there was another show where it was like, it's um, um, with the, what's Aziz Ansari's show called? Uh, it's like um, fictional. Um, I, don't know. I don't know. Whatever. A season. Sorry has a show, and one of the seasons he's in Italy, and he goes to Modena, and specifically because of 
um Massimo Batura. Anyways, oh, okay. so <laughs> um so we like followed all along with all this stuff and we like really are excited about him and this restaurant opened um I want to say it was like just pre-COVID and so we hadn't had a chance to go and then we decided to finally go and it's like a big fancy dinner and it was actually a, supposed to be our Christmas gift to each other. We we're supposed to go January 2nd, but then they canceled with all the COVID cases going up. They kind of closed down for a bit. Mm. And so now they reopened and we finally got in. It's kind of a fun time too because it's between Danny's and my birthday. So my birthday was last week and his is the end of this yeah. week. Um, so it was really fun. It was like, you know, all coursed out. Like you, um, we picked, you know, which which uh, of the experiences we wanted and all of the like really fancy plating and all that. So it was really, nice. really fun. That's exciting. That's so fun. I love stuff like that. Just like a fancy little time and mm-hmm. a special occasion because yeah, your birthday is that's exciting. Like, yeah, and you, you like have the, the opportunity to kind of like joint celebrate your birthdays. Cause Brendan and mine are too far apart to really do that, but you have like close enough that you can kind of, split the difference yeah we're nine days apart so it's yeah. pretty much like my birthday and immediately following is his so yeah that's fun yeah, yeah my brother and his girlfriend's birthdays are only one day apart whoa that's so yeah. close yeah so they basically are going to just like celebrate their birthday together wow well that's kind of fun so that's kind of fun yeah yeah i know i was like oh that's kind of an exciting thing um but yeah that sounds amazing and Super awesome. Good times. Um, So I'm glad that you're able to do that. Yeah, we had friends here for the weekend. So we also had a fun time going around. And I told you already, but just so people know, we did an escape room. Mm -hmm. And I know that you love an escape room. And now I realize why you love an escape room, because it was actually really fun. Yeah, they're so fun. It's like, I don't know. There's just something once you figure out (laughs) that there's a lot of um technology within the room as you were saying when we were talking earlier um it is really interesting to like get really creative as to how you interact with the different things to get um the next clue or the doors to open or whatever um yeah it's just like a fun little problem solving game yes and like I feel like it's also good for people of our nature because like it requires a little like competitiveness in Mm -hmm. the sense of like you have to like be motivated to win and not just like ah you know like whatever so I feel like it does work (laughs) out kind of nicely like because it's that's kind of a fun part of it too is like can we solve the puzzle like are we good do we know how to do this um so we were like very proud of ourselves when we escaped but apparently and I don't know about the kinds that you've been in but they were saying because our friends have done them a bunch they were saying that in other rooms that they've been in like you escape one room but then like you have to like actually escape another one Mm -hmm. like it's like two in one or whatever. Yeah. I had one that was four rooms. What? Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. Know. We just crazy. got out in time. <laughs> um, yeah. That seems like really crazy. Yeah. Four rooms seems like a lot. Yeah. It's like, and they were like super themed and it was really interesting. Um, yeah. Well, you'll have to, when you move closer, I think the four yes. of us should go. And there's some like really good ones um, in LA because you can imagine there's like all the like Hollywood nerds. And there are some where they like <laughs> actually have like people acting in them too. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. I would like to experience that. Yeah. Now I'm, now we're going to become little escape room connoisseurs. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happened, I think, to our friends. They like did one and they were like oh this is fun and then they like just kept doing them and then they were here and they were like would you guys want to do an escape room and we were like I don't know and I was just thinking it was just like puzzles (laughs) but then like when I figured out like there was like moving stuff and whatever I was like oh so that was it was fun um we had a good time and now what I would love to know is what might cause my persistence in trying to get out (laughs) of the escape room were it my side job (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh perfect transition as always <laughs> well I have all the answers for you all of them cool um, <laughs> awesome good uh yeah so this article um it was published this or I guess I guess it's still February when we're recording this but March when this was released so it was published this month um 2022 in the Journal of Vocational Behavior it was written by Asante Danqua Oduro Afumose Twasami, Azunu, and Lee. Um, and it's called Entrepreneurial Career Persistence of Hybrid Entrepreneurs, the Opposing Moderating Roles of Wage Work to Entrepreneurship Enrichment and Entrepreneurship to Wage Work Enrichment. 
It's a wow. mouthful. That's a very long title. <laughs> yeah. With that's a, a lot. That is a title. <laughs> with a lot of concepts in there. So it's like kind yes. of complicated a title for sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need some help breaking that one down. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so definitely I'll be looking to you for some guidance to understand what all the words you just said mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's a lot of things to define. So bear with me. Um, yes. And then the the results are a little bit complex, but I think the the story is good. So um, entrepreneurial persistence. I already talked about that a little bit, but basically it's the the effort, the actions that you take as an entrepreneur um, towards your your venture, um, re- regardless of the fact that you might be facing failures, right? So if you had failures or threats to your work or some sort of impediments, um, you're still persisting, you're still pushing through. So it's kind of that... Yeah, it's exactly what you'd imagine, right? Persistence, regardless of the situation you're in, you're just fighting through and you're trying to get what you want to get done. Okay, cool. Um, So you're not really thinking about the conditions as much as like your actions to continue moving forward. Like you said, like it's not necessarily about um, what you're facing. It's just like the behavior of keeping going. Exactly. Yes. So cool. obviously as an entrepreneur, you face a lot of challenges. So then having this persistence where you're not going to stop just because you hit a challenge is really important for your venture to continue to grow. Right. Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. So, and I would imagine that, you know, like you're saying, just like for any job, persistence is probably important, but when it's resting on your shoulders to sort of carry the whole thing, it's probably particularly important for entrepreneurs to be persistent because you could just be like, ah, you know what? I'm just not going to do this. I'll just do my full-time job and give up on this other thing. Exactly. Yeah. And that's actually why they focus on hybrid entrepreneurs. So they, I mean, this concept of entrepreneurial persistence has existed um, and been researched in a lot of other areas and just looking at entrepreneurs more generally, but they focus on hybrid entrepreneurs because of the fact that if you have a job, um, in addition to your entrepreneurship, you, that's like, it's a lot harder, right? You're doing things outside of work. Um, you're more likely to quit, especially when you face big challenges, if you are a hybrid entrepreneur and you have this like dual focus that you're constantly battling with, right? So that mm-hmm. persistence is really important in order for you to continue on into, in your venture that you have outside of your full-time job. So it is an important concept in particular for these hybrid entrepreneurs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it sounds like what they're really interested in is sort of this idea of persistence and what better place to look at whether or not someone can be persistent in a venture where they're not only persisting because of like pure material need. They're persisting because they want to be persisting and there's more stuff to it um, than just, uh, you know, I have to keep going. Uh, there's more of a choice element, it seems, like when you have something else you could fall back on if you wanted to. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yep. So then what they also were looking at, so I'll just kind of define all the other concepts. Um, so they talked about entrepreneurial self-efficacy as being important. And entrepreneurial self-efficacy is defined as what you would expect, right? You're a person that is able to, like you believe in your ability to do the venture. You're confident that you have the abilities to like run the business that you want to run, to see it out, to see it succeed. Um, so that's an important concept because they're, they hypothesize that entrepreneurial self-efficacy will lead you to be more persistent. Hmm. Okay. So we would have high self-efficacy if we feel like we can do what we need to do to be able to accomplish the goals that we've set out for worker being, for example. So like if we're low on self-efficacy, we would say, well, you know, we have these goals for worker being, we don't know if we're actually capable of doing them. And we're kind of unsure of ourselves. And so maybe when we're trying to figure out how much effort we should put into this, we're not really going to try as hard. But if we feel like, no, we really can do this, it gives us kind of that boost of energy to be like, okay, well, let's keep going. Exactly. Yes, you got it. Cool. So then they also look at fit. And this is like, there's three different types of fit that they define um, for a hybrid entrepreneur and how well they fit in the venture that they've created for themselves. So Mm -hmm. basically, if you think of the model, they talk about fit impacting your self-efficacy, right? So this what venture you've created is a good fit for you. That will make you feel more um, confident in your abilities to do it. And then that will lead to more persistence. Okay. 
Yeah. That's kind of how they mapped it out. I'll just define the three different types of fit. Um, it doesn't really come into play that much besides the fact that they all work. <laughs> um, okay. But basically, there's three different kinds. So person venture fit means that you fit the specific venture itself, like the values and the goals of it. So like a question they would ask somebody is my personal values match my ventures values and culture. So you are a good mm. fit. It's almost like company fit, right? You're a good fit for your own company. Then they, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, it's kind of interesting because you would imagine that people would start ventures that they would be a good fit for. But I guess you could think of a situation where like, okay, maybe I'm good at something and people tell me I should start a venture or I want to make extra money on the side and I think the best thing for me to do to make money might be something, but maybe it might not be. So like you and I could be like, oh, you know, what's like a really good way to make money? Like, I don't know, landscaping or something, but like we're not <laughs> good at landscape, right? Like, I don't know. Maybe you're good at landscaping. I'm not. No, no. Um, <laughs> and so like, so... I could, I guess I could imagine like depending upon what your ultimate or like your original goal was, maybe you could start something that you wouldn't be as good of a fit for as something that you're like truly passionate about. Yeah. And I think there's also places where maybe you see a gap, like you're like, oh, Mm -hmm. there's no one has made this tool and it would make a lot of sense. But like, I'm not actually good at developing this type of software or this type of tool or this type of whatever, Right, right. but I'm still going to start it even though it's not necessarily the best fit for me as a person in terms of like, and this is really more about your values and things. So more like, mm-hmm. you know, I don't actually care about this tool. <laughs> it doesn't mean much to me, right, but I see right. this gap. And so I'm going to go after it because of um, the fact that my, you know, I know that financially there might be a benefit. Right. So yeah, yep. exactly. So it's about your personal values aligning to your ventures values. Then they also have what's called needs venture supplies fit. And that mm-hmm. is where, Basically, um, the venture itself is fulfilling something that you want. So like a question is the attributes that I look for in a personal business are for fulfilled very well by my present venture. So that's kind of going towards the needs piece, like the passion that you were talking about, or like, mm-hmm. I really like, I really want to be doing X in my career. And so this is going to fulfill that need. Mm-hmm. So- okay. So that's like almost like a feels like. Is it kind of like a meaningfulness? A little bit. That is that is kind of how it feels. Um, I can't remember. Uh, Let me see if I can look back exactly what it was, um, where they took that measure from. Uh, Because they just tweaked it. So it may have been some other fit. Um, But I can't remember what it was. Uh, Yeah, I can't remember off off the top of my head what it was. That's okay. It sounds like it's something like that, though. Like almost like a this aligns with something that I find important. Yeah. It's like, I think it goes to like, you know, your job fit, like you are looking for something in your job and then that fits you. Right. So Mm -hmm. similar to that. Um, And then the last one is venture demands slash abilities fit. So this Mm. is where the, 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 the item is the match is very good between the demands of my venture and my personal skills. So this is where like, you're actually good at that thing. So there's like, I believe in this thing and I value it and we fit. I, uh, my needs are fulfilled by this venture. And then now it's also Mm. my skills are good enough for this venture. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So it's like, I, I feel like I've had the appropriate training background. Like I'm doing something that I'm actually very well qualified to do. Exactly. Yeah. So cool. when I thought about this, as I was reading it, I was thinking about the article itself and like you and I, and I was thinking, well, like from a values perspective, worker beings definitely aligned, right? Because we yes. feel very strongly about workplace wellness and research that gets in people's hands from like a needs perspective. I think we both um, were feeling like there's some additional things that we wanted to do in our career outside of what we're doing. Yeah. And that kind of fits in here. And then from the skills piece like we both are trained in pretty much exactly what we're doing so we're a pretty good fit there yay so (laughs) a couple of misfits where the uh, that song from rudolph came in my mind (laughs) oh my goodness rudolph um but (laughs) yes but we fit um 
And therefore, according to their model, we should feel more confident in our abilities and therefore we should persist through challenges. Cool. Okay. So when you're a good fit in those three areas, you say, you know what? I think that I can do this and I can do a good job at this. And that leads you to say, okay, I'm going to keep going in terms of like just putting that extra bit of effort into what I'm doing to ensure that things keep moving forward in a positive direction. Exactly. Yes. So that's kind of like the simple model. Um, I'll just talk a little bit more about that because I think it's interesting just to think about the results. Like that's what they found. Um, And kind of as a teaser, just general, well, I'll just tell you what the methods were, but there's like another component that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, But the method was they took a bunch of hybrid entrepreneurs actually in Ghana um, and they did a three wave survey where the first survey they did, they asked them about their fit to their venture. The second survey was all about self-efficacy and then enrichment, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then the Mm. third survey was about entrepreneurial persistence. So it was time lagged. So you can see like one led to the other, led to the other. Cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So that was super interesting. I think it's a good note like for folks, if you think about what you do with that information, it's, you know, basically if you're going to start a venture as you're working full time, like think about how you fit to it and make sure it actually aligns with your values, your needs and your skill set. And you should be more likely to persist and, you know, really fight through the tough times. Yeah, because I feel like, I mean, it would be really challenging to start something where you feel like you're doing it for reasons other than that you think it's something that's important to you. If you feel like you're not actually an expert in the arena of what you're trying to start, like I feel like that would be really challenging. And so I could see maybe part of the reason that people would give up over time would be like, well, you know what? Maybe it was kind of like a silly idea to start this because I don't actually know what I'm doing or I don't actually find this very important. Um, you know, like I feel like maybe when, yeah. when you're trying to move forward over time and cause it is like for us, like we obviously really love what we're doing with worker being, but it's a lot of extra work. And I could imagine that if you weren't really committed to everything that you were working towards and standing for and all of that, that it could become difficult over time to maintain the motivation to do it. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. It would be a lot harder to continue if you don't have all these pieces where you fit and you feel confident um, to then push through when it's hard because it's so easy to just be like, well, I already have a job, so whatever. Screw it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I also think like this is kind of interesting because a lot more people are starting side hustles and I feel like it's like a common thing that friends or family will bring up to you that you know, they're thinking of starting something or maybe a significant other is thinking of starting something. It's kind of good for people to know that if someone comes to them for advice about whether or not they should pursue starting something, it shouldn't really be like the, I guess the measuring stick of whether or not it's a good idea for them to start it. You might think would be like, how good of an idea is this? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but the real measuring stick would be like, how good of an idea is this for you given, you know, what you value and what your skill set is? Because I think it can be um, easy to get sort of like enticed by a good idea. But then the question of whether or not that good idea is actually going to play out to become something successful has to do with whether or not the person themselves are going to be able to stick with it and, get it over the finish line. And obviously there are other sorts of things that come into play with regard to like, not just persistence, but the actual successfulness of the venture. Like what's the quality of the product that's produced and things like that probably also have to do with other sorts of things. Um, Mm -hmm. But like, I would imagine that this is also a useful sort of framework for having conversations with people who trust or confide in you to ask what they should do about starting a venture. Like these might be good things to bring up as someone's vetting whether or not something's a good idea. Yeah, I think that's a really great call is just how can you use this information to inform whether or not you should even jump into a venture or your friends, family should jump into a venture. Um, Or even if you have an idea and you want to get someone like, you know, if you want to get yourself a Katina co-founder, then (laughs) maybe you should check these things too, right? Like not just be like, oh, I know that 
you know, I know Katina is like super responsible and is going to be on it and she's always going to be, you know, on top of her work. Great. But then if she, you know, if you hated what we're right. doing, not right. that's not going to last. Right. And then it's going to create right. problems. So it might be a good way to vet any potential co-founders as well. Yeah, that's a good call. Because like if either of us were discrepant on whether we liked this or whether or not we, you know, thought we could do it well it might cause some problems in terms of one person really wanting to be on board with something and the other person kind of not. And like mm-hmm. that could cause problems from a co-founder perspective. It also just like would stink to put in a lot of time and energy into something and then not have it pan out. So like from everyone's perspective, whether you're by yourself or with somebody else, like really doing some deep thought about whether or not you want to do something, I think is also just like always a good uh, a mm-hmm. good exercise and so it seems like this gives you something additional to really think about um, when you're considering whether or not to start something other than just like can I do this but like should I do this do I want to do this and not just like will this make money and is it possible to make it happen yeah, exactly. Exactly. And they did say that hybrid entrepreneurship is a really significant segment of entrepreneurs, right? Like mm-hmm. a lot of people don't have the luxury to quit their jobs right away, right? So it does matter for us to understand this population because obviously everything they're doing is impacting both their employee work and also their well-being, their entrepreneurial work, everything like that. So it's it's a really interesting segment to to study. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I also think it's interesting because something I think that's like a broader takeaway note for us and maybe for anyone else who's listening out there is that there are a lot of other people increasingly that are in the same boat. And I think entrepreneurship in general can feel kind of like isolating or lonely just because you are on your own. And so you're trying to figure out how to make decisions and it doesn't feel like there are tons of people to ask about. Like if you're in a company or you're in a field where you feel like you really have a lot of connections, you can ask people. But it's kind of an interesting thought to realize that there's a whole community of people out there who are grappling with some of the same sorts of decisions that you might be like your businesses might be different, but you might be trying to make decisions about how to balance um, your, you know, full-time job and your entrepreneurial venture, like when to make decisions about which one to prioritize, like all that kind of stuff I think are things that generally entrepreneurs grapple with. And so it's kind of a good reminder that you're not really alone in doing this and that there are a lot of people that you might be able to locate out there that could provide a good like support system or bouncing ideas off of folks that are out there doing the same thing. Yeah, exactly. That is a great call out. Like we know that social support is so important and it's important for entrepreneurs for sure. Um, So yeah, I like that additional little tidbit there. Um, So I did want to talk about one more concept that yes. they talked about in this paper. So this is where things get a little bit more complicated, um, but I do think it's important. So yeah. I talked about enrichment. Mm. There's this concept of enrichment. And so they kind of are pulling from this idea. Um, we've talked about like work family conflict and work family enrichment before on the podcast and how, you know, some like your conflict that's happening at work can spill into your family and vice versa, but also certain things about your work can enrich your family life and vice versa. So this is a similar idea and they looked at both sides. So if your work enriches your entrepreneurship and then if your an entrepreneurship enriches your work. And basically what they how they defined it is that this enrichment is defined as the knowledge, skills, and behaviors acquired in one area and that can be leveraged and is beneficial in the other area. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So um it's kind of like you had mentioned work family and that idea is that, okay, my family likes my makes my work life better because some of the skills that I can learn in my family actually make my job easier and vice versa. Um, there's like overlapping skills. And so they sort of amplify each other from the perspective that as you're getting better at one thing, you're also by merit of doing that, getting better at another thing. Um, and so it sounds like this is a similar idea where... Um, people are getting better at 
their side hustle through their job or getting better at their full-time job through their side hustle. Exactly. Yeah. So the question they asked for work to entrepreneurship enrichment is uh, my involvement in wage work helps me acquire skills and this helps me be a better entrepreneur. And then the reverse. So the entrepreneurship to work enrichment is my involvement in entrepreneurial work helps me to gain knowledge and this helps me be a better wage worker. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So so it's really that exact idea of sort of mm-hmm. these skills are not mutually like exclusive from each other. Exactly. Yes. So how did they look at this in the relationship in this whole model? So basically what they did is they're like, all right, so we know that if you're a good fit and if you're that leads to you being more confident and that leads to you being more persistent. Well, how does enrichment tie in? And what they found in their model is that If you're in an environment where your work is enriching your entrepreneurship, then that relationship gets stronger. That means it kind of like you're more confident and then that leads you to be more likely to persist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. But then um, the opposite isn't true. Meaning if your entrepreneurial work is enriching your work work, that relationship gets weaker. So meaning that your confidence doesn't actually um, have as strong of an impact on your ability to persist. So if you're what you're learning in your entrepreneurial venture is doing a lot of benefit for your um, full time job, um, you're that does that kind of almost detracts or just like reduces your ability to persist in some ways. It's very interesting. It's a little weird. Yeah, I feel like maybe it's kind of saying that if what you're learning through your entrepreneurial venture is like, oh, wow, I'm actually better at my job than I thought, then maybe it's not going to keep you like as persistent in the entrepreneurial venture. But if you're what you're learning in your job is making you feel like, oh, I'm actually better at this side hustle than I thought. Maybe I should take a chance and keep going with this. It might add more to your persistence is that Mm -hmm. making any sense it is making sense I've been thinking about it a lot because they didn't dive into it in a ton of detail um in terms of like what their thoughts were from a discussion perspective or like takeaways um and so I thought that was interesting but I still thought it was worth noting here because what it's telling me is like basically as an entrepreneur you should look for a job that is giving you skills and things that you can then translate to your entrepreneurial work. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you're in a job that doesn't do that, then it's probably not going to be the best fit for you and your venture. Right. And I mean, if, I mean, a very like nefarious take on it is like, (laughs) if you have employees who you don't want to leave your company, like it's kind of bad for them to be learning stuff that makes them better at their entrepreneurial venture because they'll want to (laughs) like, leave more if they're getting better (laughs) stop giving companies bad ideas katina that is rude (laughs) it is rude but it did come to my mind of being like huh well i guess uh one way to keep uh employees on the hook is to make sure they're not getting any better at their side job (laughs) at work um but no you obviously want to make your employees feel supported in everything that they want to do because then they will have positive PR and boosterism towards your company and they won't tell people bad things about you. Yes, that. And also we do know that side hustles actually make people better employees. So I wonder, the thing that I was wondering about is if you're, what you're learning your side hustles making you even better at work, right? Um, Does that, is the reason why, and this is something we don't know and this would probably be a future study piece, is the reason why my persistence is dropping because I'm progressing in my job like Mm. I'm now getting promoted and now I'm like a VP of something or other and I'm like you know what I'm making a lot of money here like I right I'm gonna pause on that venture right now I think that's probably right I think you've got that I think that sounds right to me yeah so that's that's my guess we don't know for sure but it is interesting to note. and if you are in a position where you are a hybrid entrepreneur like us and you want to continue to persist the big takeaways are Find a job that helps you grow that will in a way that works with your um, entrepreneurial goals and venture. And then make sure that your venture is a good fit for you. Yeah. I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense. And if you can think, I mean, and also we know from enrichment, sometimes just 
thinking about and really being conscious about like, oh, these are ways that my family enriches my work or my work enriches my family. Like sometimes it's not that it's not. It's just that you're not really thinking about it consciously. So if you're feeling like you're dragging a little bit in terms of your motivation for your side hustle, one thing that you might do is just really like meditate on what it is at your job that's making you better at it. And just keep that in mind when you're engaging in those things like, oh, it's not like these two things are completely separate. I am getting actually, I am actually improving. Yeah. But don't think too hard about how your side hustle is improving your yeah. work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> just think about how your work's improving your side hustle. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's all, that's all you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought it was an interesting paper. I think you know, it's one of the first that's really looking, at least in the literature that I'm familiar with, that's looking at hybrid entrepreneurship, but that's the case they also made. So I'm hoping that yeah. I'm not lying when I say that. Um, but it is a really interesting population. It's a population that we know has grown. Like we've talked about side hustles and gig work and all that kind of stuff. And this kind of fits into that similar space um, to some extent. And I think that it's just really important for everyone that wants to do something in addition to their work to just think about like how are they making sure that they're a good fit so that they don't run into a place where they're not persisting and we know that if you don't persist if you like let it fail like that's going to obviously have a toll on you right Um, or if you right. don't feel motivated to persist but you're just doing the motions that's also exhausting it's much more exhausting than if you're like really engaged and excited to persist through difficult situations so there's a lot of benefits for everyone if they really think thoroughly around what their side projects or entrepreneurial ventures are yeah that's awesome I'm really glad that you read this because it really helps me think about and feel good about the fact that we're a good fit Mm -hmm. but it also helps me to think about why um we're you know we've been able to persist which is good and also gives me some food for thought when I'm thinking about um, you know, what questions to ask students or other folks who are thinking about starting entrepreneurial ventures that I might not have thought about before to help them decide if it's like the right move for them. So I think this is super helpful and practical and I'm glad that you read it. Yes, thank you. Me too. And thank you to the authors for writing it. Um, so for all of our listeners, if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, um, would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at workerbeing.com. As we mentioned at the top of the show, you can find us on our website, workerbeing.com, on social at workerbeing. And of course, please well, feel free and welcome to join our community and talk about workplace wellness more with other like-minded folks at workerbeing.com slash community. Thanks for listening. The Worker Being Podcast is hosted by us, Patricia Grabar and Katina Sawyer, and produced by Allie Johnson.